Okay, so here we go. We're going to start section 6.6, 6, and this is called the Remainder and Factor Theorems. So this is the first section where we're really going to start to put a lot of the things we've been doing in the first half of the chapter together. We're going to start working with synthetic division in some different ways. We're going to start talking about factoring polynomials beyond the ones that use the special patterns from one of the prior videos that we've looked at. And we're really going to start to hone in on some theorems that are going to tell us a lot more about the answer and the remainder that we get when we do synthetic division beyond what we've already talked about. Okay, so let's start by looking at the remainder theorem. And that is right here. I took this from your book. Um, again, your book does a really great job of putting these things in boxes. And they say it in better ways than I can, so I'm just going to rip them off and put it on the slide and talk to you about what it says. So this, if you're curious, is on page 377 of your book. And what it basically says is if you take a polynomial and you divide it by this linear term, x minus r, which is what we've been doing, the remainder is a constant p of r. That's the key thing. I'm going to highlight that and talk a little bit more about that. The remainder is a constant p of r. So that means if we divide a polynomial by another polynomial, a linear polynomial, the remainder that we get is the same thing as if we just put the constant number from the divisor, in the case of what your book says, r, in for this function and get its value. Why is that important? Because that's going to enable us to do substitution, do that function notation that we talked about earlier in the chapter, without having to really do messy calculations. In fact, this has a name, it's called, just like we do synthetic division, what I'm about to show you now is called synthetic substitution. Sorry, my pen is not working very well with my finger there. T-I-T-U-T-I-O-N. And why is it called that? Because we're going to use synthetic division to find function values. So let's look at an example of that. All right, so the first example from your sheet says, if f of x equals 3x cubed plus 6x squared minus 2x plus 8, what is f of 6? All right, so we're going to do synthetic division and Using the remainder theorem from the last page, we're going to put the 6 into the box. Now, notice how the remainder theorem said x minus r. This is why when we did synthetic division a while back, I always told you to change the sign. Because we're given a standard form, or the general form has a minus sign in it. So that's why we had to always change the sign before. I told you I would give you the answer to that question. Well, here it is. So anyway, back to the problem. We want to find f of 6. So 6 is what goes in our box for synthetic division. And like we've done before, we'll put all our coefficients, and we set up our synthetic division problem. Now, for this, I don't really care about the quotient. I only care about the remainder, because remember we said that f of 6 is going to be the remainder when we do this division problem. So let's do it. Drop the 3, multiply by 6, we get 18. Add it to the 6 in column 2 gets me 24. Multiply by the 6 again gets me 142, so I put that in column 3. Add them up, 140. One more round of multiplication, 140 times 6 is 852. Add to 8, we get 860. That's my remainder, I always circle it. So now let's talk about the remainder theorem again. This means that this is f of 6, 860. In other words, if I plugged in 6 for x, and I did this whole order of operations mess that I'm writing out here in my calculator, I would get 860. Now, isn't that cool? I don't have to worry about uh, order of operations. I don't have to worry about plugging something in wrong on my calculator. I can use something that I know you're all good at and have mastered, synthetic division, to answer this question now of what is f of 6. Okay? Take a look at the second example on your sheet. This is where synthetic division comes in handy. Read the word problem. We'll break it down on the next slide. Notice the nastiness of the numbers, though. Okay, And you can pause the video and read the word problem, and we'll go from there. Okay, so the word problem talks about this function involving going abroad, studying abroad. And if you look, all the coefficients are really funky, nasty decimals. Okay, 
So, I rewrote the function up there on the screen, 0.02x to the fourth minus 0.52x cubed plus 4.03x squared plus 0.09x plus 77.54. We said that represents the number in thousands of students that study abroad for x years and the key thing to know is x represents years after the year 1993. So the word problem asks how many students according to this function would you guess are going to study abroad in 2015, so next year. So the important thing we have to remember is what is x in this situation. Now many people may jump the gun and say that x is 2015 because we're talking about time and years, but remember what I just said here, years after 1993. So 2015 will actually be represented by 2015 minus 1993, because we have to calculate how many years has passed since 1993 in the year 2015, and that turns out to be 22. So 22 is what's going to go in my box for synthetic division, and here it is. I'm setting up the synthetic division problem just as you see it using all the coefficients from that really funky, nasty function. Okay, so here we go. Drop the first term, multiply, and add. Then we multiply again, and we add. I'm going slow just for right now, but I'm pretty sure we can whiz through this synthetic division at this point. So why don't we do that? We multiply one more time and add one more time. Then our final step is 50.03 times 22, and we add that, and we get 1178.2. That's my remainder, and that is f of 22. But let's answer the question. The question wants to know how many students will study abroad in 2015. Remember, this number, its unit is in thousands. So, we really have to turn this into thousands. We have to multiply 1178.2 by 1,000, and we get 1,178,200 students. So according to this function, we can estimate that that many students are going to study abroad next year in 2015. Okay? You have a couple practice examples, some nice functions, some funky functions. Use synthetic substitution in order to get those values. You can rewind the tape if you need it. Otherwise, you can carry on with the next theorem. Okay, welcome back. We're going to talk about the factor theorem, which is right here, and it's from page... Going a little fast with my animations. We'll go a little slower there. So it's in page 379 of your book. There you go. And it says, the binomial x minus r is a factor of the polynomial p of x if and only if p of r equals zero. The factor theorem is a really cool theorem, and it's really going to bridge the gap between synthetic division and factoring large polynomials. Here's what it's saying. Okay, It's saying... If you take, and I highlighted most of the key things here for you, if you take the r in the factor, the linear factor that you're trying to factor out of a polynomial and perform synthetic division on it, if you get a remainder of zero, then you know it's a factor. It's kind of like when you're checking factors of numbers. How do you know that 2 is a factor of 8? Well, when you divide 8 by 2, you don't get a remainder. It divides evenly. Same kind of idea, except we're going to use polynomials. So let's look at an example. The first example on your sheet says, is x minus 3 a factor of x cubed plus 4x squared minus 15x minus 18? So here's how we check that. Okay. So if we use the factor theorem, r in this case is going to be 3. So we put the 3 inside our box for synthetic division, and we divide. Okay. Plug that all in. We drop the 1, we'll go through those steps kind of quickly, and I think what's more important here is to see the answer and the outcome. Okay, If you need to take it slow, you can stop the tape and try the synthetic division problem on your own, but I'm going to assume that we are proficient in that procedure. So when you finish, you see that the remainder is 0. That's the last number. Well, we're happy about that. That means, using the factor theorem, p of 3 is 0, so x minus 3 is a factor of x cubed plus 4x squared minus 15x minus 18. 
Now, the second part of this problem wants to know what are the other factors. So the thing you need to look at now is the answer. So I'm going to rewrite the answer. x squared plus 7x plus 6. Remember, we drop a degree, and we take the coefficients of our answer in our quotient. This has a special name, what I just wrote here. This is called the depressed polynomial. Now, don't feel bad for this polynomial. It's not sad. The reason why it's called the depressed polynomial is because this is what's left over after you factor out x minus 3. Just like when we use the number example that I said, 8, you divided 8 by 2 to check if it was a factor. The leftover was 4, because 8 divided by 2 is 4. To get the other factors of 8, you would then have to work with the 4, like we've done before when we were doing square roots, for example, when we break down numbers. Same kind of idea. So, to get the other factors, we're now going to factor the depressed polynomial. Okay? So to find the remaining factors, now I'm going to write off on the side here x minus 2. That's the first one. We got that out of the way from the division. Now we want to factor x squared plus 7x plus 6. Two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to 7, 6 and 1. So x plus 6 and x plus 1 are my two factors. So they're my other two factors of that cubic. So, we can then say, because sometimes they'll ask you to find the complete factorization, and this is what that means, the complete factorization of x cubed plus 4x squared minus 15x minus 18 is x minus 2 times x plus 6 times x plus 1. Okay? Let's look at one more. So the second example asks, show that x minus 2 is a factor of x cubed minus 7x squared plus 4x plus 12, and then again, find the remaining factors. So we're checking for x minus 2. So using our factor theorem, we're going to stick a 2 in the box for synthetic division. We'll drop all the coefficients in, in order, and we'll do synthetic division. So we drop our 1. 1 times 2 is 2. Negative 7 plus 2 is negative 5 times 2 is negative 10, 4 times, or plus negative 10, excuse me, is negative 6, then we multiply, and we get 0, so yes, we're happy, f of 2 is 0, x minus 2 is a factor of this cubic that we were given. Now, what's our depressed polynomial? x squared minus 5x minus 6, so now we're being charged with factoring that, and that is much easier to factor. We've been doing that for months. We want two things that multiply to negative 6 and add to negative 5. Well, you can think about it. I'm thinking negative 6 and positive 1. Do you agree? I sure hope so. So my two factors will be x minus 6 and x plus 1. They're the other two factors of the cubic. Okay? Interesting that it's a cubic polynomial with a degree 3 and three linear factors. More on that a little bit later. But for right now, the complete factorization of x cubed minus 7x squared plus 4x plus 12 is x minus 2, x minus 6, x plus 1. Okay? With that, you have a few more practice problems, similar kind of idea. I'll give you one of the linear factors. Use synthetic division to find the depressed polynomial and see if you can factor any further. I may be asking you to find things that aren't factors. So incidentally, we didn't talk about this. We didn't do an example. If I ask you to check a factor and its remainder is not zero, then you just say, no, it's not a factor, and you can move on. Okay? So with that, bring any questions to class, and I wish you a good evening.